Kunimi scans the room with a neutral face. From time to time, his eyes go back to his best friend. Keen Daichi, said best friend, is totally absorbed by a lame race. No, come on. It's not the first time he says it. It continues to happen, every time someone uses the blue shell. This time, Kunimi's gaze rests a little too long on the back of the boy, eyes lingering on his shape, the way it tenses. Because of the stretch of his arms. Apparently, Keen Daichi is convinced that stretching your arms during a curve will help your character. You're making me nervous. Hmm? The answer is quick and Kunimi blinks after speaking. Keen Daichi turns his head, a goofy smile. If you keep watching me like this, you'll make me lose the race. The boy huffs a laugh, or something that Keen Daichi can count. As one. You just suck at this game. I almost win before. He's also almost whining and Kunimi can absolutely see the hint of a pout. Almost. He doesn't lose a bit. The player turns his head fast, childishly. Now that Keen Daichi is focused on the game, again, he can't see the way the other boy stick his tongue out. I quit. About time. Kunimi really tried to contain the comment but he likes to. Much what it's about to happen. Keen Daichi, on the other hand, just rolls his eyes and leave the pad aside. He stretches out a little, sore because he was sitting on the floor for a while, and finally takes a sit near Kunimi. Done? Done. He offers a little smile observing Kunimi's grabby hands. I got it, I got it. He shift enough to takes his hands and drag the boy on his lap. In this way, Kunimi can curls against his chest like a kitten. I'm waiting. He mumbles, moving closer to his chest. Keen Daichi rolls his eyes but doesn't reply. Instead, he place an hand on his waist and leave a soft kiss on top of his head. He's sure that he can almost hear him purring at the contact. I'm surprised every time it happens. Kunimi scoffs a little but doesn't move. It is, in fact, surprising. How comfortable he is near him. Especially when he's not a cuddler or a sweet person. Just, he feels so safe and relaxed that it's now a tradition. Every time they hang out, Keen Daichi would play a little and then let Kunimi rest on his lap. Are you sure you don't feel weird about it? Kunimi opens his eyes, who has closed a while ago, and raises an eyebrow. You ask this every times. Keen Daichi flushes, scratching his neck. Sorry. Just, you wanna be sure that I'm comfortable. He interrupt him because they also do this every times, since the first. You Uetero, I am. Why do you think I'm doing this with you? The boy gulps, not looking totally at him. Because I would never make fun of you or tell anyone else. Kunimi hits him, on the chest. Ouch, what the? You said something. Stupid. He glares at him, taking his original position and hiding his face on Keen Daichi's chest. I do it with you because you're the only one who make me want to do it. Nobody says another thing. The room is silent and if both of them blushes, then there's no one to point it out. Or to see the two boy fall asleep in that same position. Kunimi on top of him, completely relaxed, and Keen Daichi. Holding his waist making him feel safe. It's not the only thing they secretly share. They also share contact, when no one is watching. Like now, during a particular boring practice. I just wanna go home and die on my bed. He grumbles, resting on the bench. They're almost done and Kunimi can't find the determination to continue what he should do. He really just wanna lazy around. Always so. Positive, I see. Kunimi eyes meeting Keen Daichi's meaty legs. He raises his gaze, meeting an amused expression. Shut up. There's not eager behind his words. Keen Daichi, in all honesty, can also see the light of amusement in his eyes. Only if you make some room for me. I'll think about it. He offers a hint of a smirk, sliding to the side and leaving enough space for the other to sit. So kind. Today. Kunimi doesn't look at him, he just shove his elbow in his rib like nothing it's happening. I was joking. He huffs bending on himself because of the pain. Kunimi sends him a side glance, guilty. Without any words, he poked his knee with a finger. Hmm? Keen Daichi looks down where Kunimi is rubbing circle with his index. Oh. He slides his hand near Kunimi's and reaches for the finger. With a simple move, their fingers are intertwined. I'm sorry. He murmurs, eyes still fixed on the gym's floor. I know. He squished his finger, attracting his attention. Their eyes meet and they share a smile. Shut up. It's during one rainy day that things changed. I hate the rain so much. Keen Daichi shivers, a blanket around his shoulders. It's not that bad. They're stuck at Keen Daichi's house. The rain won't let Kunimi go home. 
Not that bad, he repeat, incredulous. It's a nightmare. I hate it. Kunimi turns his back at the window, where he was previously observing the rain. It's during time like this that laying in bed is the best. Kindaichi rolls his eyes, legs crossed on the bed where he's sitting. Of course you like the rain for this reason, lazy ass. Kunimi raises an eyebrow, walking to the other's bed. What? The boy looks like a lost puppy, head inclined to one side, observing the boy's moves. Without a word, Kunimi just drop on top of him. I'll show you my lazy ass. Kindaichi release a choked breath, caught by surprise. You're heavy. Kunimi looks into his eyes, furrowed eyebrows. Are you calling me fat? Absolutely. He responses, dead serious before. Laughing. Kunimi glares at him, turning to give his back at Kindaichi. Such a baby. Still not facing him, Kunimi shows him his middle finger. That's bitten by Kindaichi. Kunimi yelps. What the? Revenge. Kunimi looks at him over his own shoulder. You're crazy. The other boy shrugs, smiling innocently making Kunimi roll his eyes. Make me some space. And Kindaichi does. He opens his arms and legs letting Kunimi rest with the back on his chest. The laptop, taken from the bedside table. Hug me. It's your punishment. Obviously. Still smiling, Kindaichi hugs him from the waist. In the meanwhile, Kunimi chooses a Disney movie and presses play. Again? His breath tickles Kunimi's ear, making him shiver. What do you have against the princess and the frog? Kindaichi opted. For the silence. Kunimi, by his side, opted to snuggling closer to the other boy. It's halfway through the movie that Kunimi feels a weight on his shoulder. It's Kindaichi, who's resting with the forehead against his shoulder. Are you sleeping? No answers. He raises, then, an hand caressing his hair. Locks between his fingers, brushing the hair with care. Sleep well. He whispers, again. This. Time, though, Kindaichi react, he raises his head and meet his eyes. Hi. Kunimi can feel his breath against his mouth. Hi. He feels his mouth dry and gulps. I thought you were sleeping. Just relaxing against you. Kunimi's mouth twitch, a smile that's trying to hold back. Are you using me? Kindaichi leans closer, just a little. What if I am? Kunimi does the same. You should pay me, don't. You think? But he doesn't get an answer, because their lips brush against each other and Kunimi's mind go completely blank. The kiss is more like a peck, or a press of two mouth. Still, it's enough to make both of them hold their breath. Why? He manages to ask. Kindaichi cups his cheek, avoiding the question. Was it bad? Kunimi leans into the contact. You didn't answer. So did you. And there. Lips brush against each other again. Tenderly, with caution and a little of fear. They're uncertain of what they're doing but they don't want to stop it. Because I want a reason to like the rain. Kindaichi talks against his mouth and Kunimi can feel it more than hearing his words. Did you find it, the reason? A slight blush color their cheeks. It depends. On what? From their distance, Kunimi. Is sure that Kindaichi can hear how fast his heart is beating. On you. It depends on you. Kunimi smiles against his lips, moving his thumb on his cheek in an affectionate way. Ask me. Kindaichi retracts a little, to look at him. To admire his expression and his beauty. Do you want to be the reason why I'll start to like the rain? Kunimi drags him near, again. Lips meeting lips. Kunimi is. Not much a talker but the answer is loud and clear. Yes, 